Hi everyone, and welcome back to my channel. Uh, today we're at the Greenlawn Cemetery, and if you forgot, because it's been a while, uh, winter was really gross and I didn't feel like filming, my name's Cody, and today we're gonna do a review of the Sigma 150 to 600 millimeter lens, which I got for Christmas, so I've had four months to test it out. And boy, do I like this lens. be wondering, Cody, why are you at a cemetery today? And I would have to say, why shouldn't I be at a cemetery today? All this week, I've been tracking owls. Now that I saw all the bluebirds in the United States, uh, my new obsession has been to find owls. And allegedly, there's been some great horned owls uh, roosting around here somewhere. So uh, after checking my Avedon app, my bird app, and seeing that, I decided what a better place to uh, test out my camera and look for some owls. Correction, I'm showing you me testing out my lens, not my camera. Obviously, I've been using this camera for the last year or so. Actually, like two years. Six years. Six years. Oh, I've had it for six years. I've had this camera for a while, but this lens is awesome. This cemetery has everything. It's about like, it's like a network of like weaving um, lanes and stuff. But it has like a nature preserve, it has a chapel, these humongous chapels, these humongous mausoleums, acres and acres of like birds are like able to live freely over here. It's pretty awesome. Like anywhere you go, there's like birds everywhere. I've seen turkey vultures, robins, cardinals, warblers, different types of warblers, like everything, but not the owls so far. But let's get back to the lens though. Some of the things that I love about this lens is that you have three options for a focus. You got the autofocus, the manual override, and the manual focus. Uh, if usually when I'm shooting like bird stuff, I like to use the um, manual focus because sometimes like a branch will get in front of the bird, and you just have to like tweak it back a little bit because your focus might uh, get the branch rather than the bird. And this lens is a little bit less grabby than some of the other lenses. Um, if you have it in the wrong setting. I just saw a raccoon up there, but unfortunately, just because you have a good lens doesn't mean you're gonna get necessarily good photos. Because <laughs> I saw it and then it slunk away and it must've went into this little tiny hole up there. I'm really surprised that a raccoon could fit in there, but I think that's the only explanation. So I have really no idea what this park is. We found this like underpass bridge thing 
we found there's like doggy stations here. Is this a park? Is this a cemetery? Like, I have no idea. But we want to go back here with the red bud trees and go check out this. This is definitely more than a cemetery. Uh, a lot of the trees are marked and it's, it's, I would actually say it's more of a sanctuary almost because you know we saw the raccoons, we saw a sign that said this one tree was 313 years old, that this, when it was first settled, it was like pre-colonial era, that uh, the trees were saved because this was a cattle ranch like area. And basically they saved some of the trees and they're like, literally older than the United States, which is amazing that something like this still exists in the city of Columbus. We're getting a little bit munchy, so we're gonna go get some snacks and we're gonna go check out another park. Okay, so we got our Starbucks and I decided that we were gonna switch it up. Um, looking for owls might be a little bit too hard today. So we decided to go to Prairie Oaks and we're also still testing out the lens still. And um, I decided to come here because uh, my one of my new obsessions or it's been a big obsession for like the last four months has been getting pictures of um, bluebirds. And we've been out west a lot and I've been getting pictures of like Western bluebirds and mountain bluebirds. And it was only just recently that I've been finding the Eastern bluebirds. Uh, it's primarily because when we're out West, we're down South, like Southwest a lot. And Eastern bluebirds have been mostly been wintering in the, sub the Southeast and we're never down there. So now that it's spring, they're back up North and I find them really pretty and I find it exciting to find, to see them. And Prairie Oaks, bluebirds love open areas. And what a better place than something that has prairie in the names. Now, if you look back to my left, uh, you can see bird boxes by this like open, like the prairie part hasn't really grown up yet, but this is what they like, open areas, open spaces, and places where they can perch. Uh, just a few minutes ago, I saw a, a one bluebird perched where the swallows are back there. Yeah, I got some photos and we can show that. And I'm hoping that they can come back and we can sh I can show you me using my camera taking a photo of them. Uh, I know I shouldn't be filming on wide angle, but just because of the lighting right now, the sun's coming down, it's really perfect for photography. It's not really good for film. But I want to talk more about the Sigma 150 to 600 millimeter. Now, this lens is awesome. One of the drawbacks I have with it though, and it just started happening like last week, is that it's been draining my battery. Uh, so like I use multiple batteries and I switch them back and forth, but I think because like I'm really guilty of this, I've been taking a lot of photos, especially like the last month, uh, like 300, 300 raw photos in a session, um, just really utilizing my time to take as many photos as possible. I think doing that and also using the uh, Canon wireless transfer, meaning I'm transferring photos from the camera to my cell phone. I think that's been uh, really hard on my batteries and I either need to like replace my batteries or I don't know, we'll figure that out later. I think it has to do with my lens though. The lens might be the problem because it's a large lens and you know, these are like tiny batteries to be moving the, uh, the all the mechanics within the lens to get the sharpness and basically all that. Which, by the way, this is a 105 millimeter. Uh, it's a it's 105 millimeter filter size on the end. I bought this lens though because I needed a better telephoto than the kit lens. I think that one went up to 300 millimeters, so it's twice that size. And uh, this, I decided to go with Sigma because to get something similar in Canon, it was about three thousand dollars, and I think I got this for seven or eight hundred dollars. Sigma, which that's why a lot of people you know, go with Sigma rather than Canon. It was not.
Well, I hope you enjoyed this video and you got something out of my little mini review of the Sigma 150 to 600 millimeter lens. Uh, I think it's a lens for anyone that is using a DSLR and we're going to be putting more videos up like this. So make sure you like, comment, subscribe down below and we'll see you next time. Bye.